Ranger Jonathan. Welcome to White Oak Canyon Trailhead here at the boundary of Shenandoah National Park. Today we're going to be doing a one mile hike to the lower falls of White Oak Canyon. They are a 60 foot falls. So hopefully because of all the rain we've had here recently, we should get to see some pretty nice sights. Now before we begin our hike, there's a couple things that if you were to come out here on your own to be aware of at the boundary. First, plan ahead. Make sure you know where you are planning on going. So we have a map here of the trail, but you can get maps online on our website, or you can download our park app and download the map there as well. Other things to be aware of, our parking lot that is here is very small. It tends to fill up fairly quickly, especially on weekends. If you're here, even by 10 o'clock on most weekends, the parking lot is generally full, filled up. So plan ahead and be aware of that. Other things, there are several water crossings on this trail. Today, the version of it that we are doing has one water crossing. But if you were to do the whole White Oak Canyon Cedar Run loop, there are upwards of four water crossings that you have to be aware of. So make sure you're planning ahead on your footwear you're bringing with you as well if you aren't bringing water shoes, how you want to mitigate having water around you. Make sure you have food and water with you and that you have let others know what your plan is. So make sure that they're aware of when you're coming out here and when you're planning on leaving. Because it is a fairly strenuous trail if you're doing the whole thing. What we're doing today is a little bit easier. It only has 500 feet of elevation gain. Now when you do get here, we do ask that you pay the entrance fee. There is an entrance fee booth over here. If that is not manned, we do have a self-registration station right here where you can pay your fee to enter the park. Now those fees are very important because they help us maintain and keep the park looking as nice as it is. And you'll get to see some of that in use today. So I think that's about it for our beginning of our hike. Just as I said, make sure you're just thinking ahead because we want to make sure everyone has a safe and fun experience. So let's begin our hike as we hike out the one mile to the lower White Oak Falls. Welcome to our first stop. We're right now at the first crossing of Cedar Run Creek. Now, I like to stop here because I like to remember why am I out here today. There are lots of different reasons why people might come to a national park like Shenandoah and to places like White Oak Canyon here. Sometimes it's the recreation. When you're doing 7.2 miles and climbing 2,000 plus feet of elevation, that's a good day of exercise. Or sometimes it's for rediscovery or to connect with nature. If you listen behind me, you might find your own reason for coming out here as you're hiking. So behind me is this nice creek and I just encourage you to take a second and listen to the sounds of the creek. So we're going to head onwards and keep heading up the trail. Okay, welcome to our next stop. We have reached the intersection. The intersection of where White Oak Canyon Trail connects in with the Cedar Run Trail. Now today we're going to be following the White Oak Canyon Trail to the Lower Falls. But if you were to come out here again, you could do the whole thing. This actually, a lot of our trails are interconnected and this actually connects up with Cedar Run 
further up the mountain to make a pretty nice loop that's a little over seven miles. Now, when you are out here, if you ever come across an intersection like this and you aren't sure where to go, I recommend referring to these concrete pillars. There are metal bands on them that give you directional information as well as mileage that can help you find your way up here if you don't have a map with you. But I still highly recommend that everyone have a map or as I stated before, the park app that allows you to download the maps ahead of time. They can have with you on your smartphone or tablet. So when we are, we're only continuing up this direction in our hike. As you're going, keep your eyes out. We might get to see things cool. And if I see anything, I'll stop and we might get to talk about them. So let's continue onwards. So as we were hiking, I wanted to take a quick second to stop and talk about the trail we see around us. So most of the trail you've seen is pretty narrow, generally three to feet, four feet wide. But here you can see the trail bed is 12 feet or so wide. And this is actually a sign of people. So you can help the park. Even without coming and volunteering or doing physical work in the park, you can help us continue to protect and preserve the park by the choices you make when you're hiking. So what we see here is this giant mud puddle right here in the center of the trail. So naturally people who we don't always like jumping in the mud have walked off to the side on either side here. Now here at White Oak Canyon, we can get thousands and even possibly hundreds of thousands of visitors in a year Imagine hundreds of thousands of people over just a year, even over a decade, every year walking on the sides and that mud pole is going to get bigger and bigger. And so the trail is going to keep getting wider and wider. When this trail was originally built, it was only three feet wide, but over time it's grown. So what can you do to help? Get dirty, walk through the mud. If you walk through the mud, you help us continue to protect and preserve the park. So we've reached our next stop in the trail. It's our next trail intersection. So the trail actually continues up behind me to the right, but over here is actually our link connector trail between the White Oak Canyon Trail and Cedar Run Trail. Now, you may have noticed it's a little wet. So if you are looking at doing that trail and from the drive or having to use that link connector, please be aware and plan ahead for that water crossing. The other thing I'd like to point out is this nice little sign we have up here up the trail. It's a reminder that on the White Oak Canyon Trail, despite its picturesque and scenic views, we do not allow any camping on this trail. So if you're wanting to do this as a backpacking trip, you'll have to plan a side trail off to find a good spot for camping. Information about that can be found on our backcountry camping page, as well as when you get your backcountry permit. So let's continue onwards. So after a little over one mile, we've made it. We're here at the Lower White Oak Canyon Falls. I think they're kind of pretty impressive. They're not as big as say Niagara Falls, but they're one of the largest in this region. They're a little over 60 feet, and it's actually a whole series of falls. We actually have another four continuing up the mountain if we were to go further up the trail, covering the whole height of the mountain here. So 
There's many reasons why people come out here. Some recreate and swim down in the pools at the base. Others just to sit and listen. So today we're just gonna sit here and listen. If you wanna come back and experience it for yourself, feel free. But listen up. So a couple quick things out here at the falls. I'm nestled up behind this rock so that we can hopefully hear me a little bit better because of how loud the falls are behind me. But I want to take a quick second to talk about the falls themselves, or more specifically the water in the falls. So all of this water here originated from springs and rains up on top of the mountain. And it will travel a meandering stream down here on the Robinson River till it hits the Rapidan River, which will eventually drain into the Rappahannock. And finally, after over 100 plus miles of meandering through Virginia, it'll hit the Chesapeake Bay. So the headwaters, this portion of the headwaters for the Chesapeake Bay is protected. Because here in the National Park, one of our responsibilities is to protect the natural resources. You can see that in my patch. We have that lake on here, representing the water around us. But the thing I like to remind people is, once it leaves the park, it's not protected by us anymore. And it travels hundreds of miles before it makes it to the bay, passing through towns and even cities. But water is one of the most important things for us. We need it to survive. All the plants around me need it to survive, and all the animals as well. So it's one of those critical resources. And one of the things I think we need to consider more when we're being conscientious about what we decide to do, even just here in the park. If you're going to carry liquids with you, carry them out with you rather than draining them into the water here where it can get further down to other people that might be using the water as well. The other thing I'd like to mention, if you are coming out here to recreate, please be safe. These stones, when wet, are extremely slick. And Trying to climb up the falls, it's not uncommon for people to fall and get hurt. And these falls in their own way are kind of living. They are constantly changing. The force of all of this water coming down them is actually breaking the rock as it's going over time and pieces will fall. All the pieces littered around me are all from the falls at one point. So just be safe and be careful when you come out here to experience White Oak Canyon Falls. Welcome back. We've made it back to the trailhead. So that just about concludes our two mile round trip hike out to the lower White Oak Canyon Falls. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, maybe learned some things about some of the interesting things that we've explored during our short little hike. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website or leave us a comment. We'd be more than happy to respond and continue exploring your parks. Remember, Shenandoah National Park and all 400 plus national park sites are ours. We the people, these are our parks. So continue to explore them and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.